thing that uh, we agreed we have in common is uh, is a serious belief that if you're gonna play Jerry's music, you got to get to where you work this finger, you know, ring in the middle like a pair. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that's what brings us together. That's the that's the band, the bond. <clears throat> And uh, 
in the beginning of that tune, he kind of plays the whole tune all the way through. And then he does this kind of little freeform jam out thing. And then he comes back and plays what I would call the head of the tune. And so what I always thought was the composition was that part, you know, the head of the tune. And then when he recorded the Pickens CD, there was a new section there that I'd never heard before. So I did that and kind of put it all back together. So if you look, look at what I've got, it looks a lot like the Pickens CD performance. But what I really did was I went and got all the moves out of the original. It's got the same form, you know, as the, as the Pickens CD version. And uh, my handout is a teaser to get you to, to head down the hall and buy the real thing. Because uh, with the claw in this issue of Figure Style Quarterly, I have now redone all of the tunes that were in the original Heavy Neckin' book. So now the quarterly is like Heavy Neckin' 2.0. Uh, so you can go to eBay and pay 250 bucks or something. I think we're a little less than that to buy all those issues down there from Becky. But Becky and Rita need to be, they need to see a little action down there. You know, so if we get excited. But meanwhile, let me put my hand up. Somebody will run forward and be our assistant. <laughs>
And every time you hear two notes, it's these two fingers. And every time you hear one note, it's these two fingers, the thumb and index, you know, back and forth. And I think I wrote, I wrote out enough to get you going. After that, you're kind of on your own. But the idea is the same, you know. And uh, I think that sounded like a couple notes right in there. Before, 
you've seen this thing with the thumb and index and the ring in the middle. Now, if you have worked out the claw before and you are uh, you have backslid and you're not really using these fingers right, start with this section because it's a little easier than some of the front sections, and then go back to the part which, if we're over on the other page, it's like. Uh, measure six on the other page. And that's the claw part, right? And then one thing that's not here is the other little section where Jerry is doing the same thumb and index thing. That's thumb and index and then it's the pair. And but Jerry's doing one other thing. Excuse me, doing one other thing which is to uh, play the uh, bar here where you're coming up and down off the tip of your finger. And when you do that in time, what happens is you're starting with the bar up and you're playing the fourth string with your thumb. You're playing the third string with your index finger. You go back to your thumb and while your thumb is down, the bar lays down. And the pair of fingers picks up that note. And what's odd about this is the third string is being played by both your index finger and your middle finger. And Jerry does that plenty. Those two fingers like kind of overlapping on one string. So you'll have and once you can do that, you can do this. And this. But without this, you'll go nuts trying to get the rest of it. Then you'll kind of slop through the claw forever. And uh, I think it'd be great if, like, next year we could have a, a moment where we have, like, a claw choir. <laughs> we could, you know, get, get us on the phone and say, we have 200 guys playing the claw together. And they're in tune and in time. I dream of such a moment. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, all of them have 1,352 guitar But not just playing Go Tell Man Brody, man. I mean the claw, you know. So anyhow, uh, take her away, Phil. <laughs> John called me up, and I just about had a conniption fit on the phone when he uh, called me up. But uh, I put some stuff on YouTube because I, in the past year or so, I've really dug into some of Jerry's music and really concentrated on that that uh, claw and thing that he had. And uh, I guess a good example of that, uh, is that coming through? Baldwin guitar. This is, I think Jerry's was a 68, but the heart of this guitar is the Prismatone pickup. Did you, did you switch DIs? Same one. D, D1.
last train to Clarksville, he had a really funky thing going. <laughs> change over to Jerry's open G tunes too. 
Mississippi Flash tune, and I believe that's a. Somebody said it was like a C9 tune or something. But that's a kind of a weird tune. Wish I could play that. I can't find my capo this morning. But like a lot of his uh, open G tunes. Just different enough that you, you got to be willing to feel stupid again. 
and, and if you if you got that and you want to play it bad, then the skill is to sit there and work through it and make sure you got it. And it's in chunks, a little bit. Am I picking this up? Or? Absolutely right. Because <laughs> it didn't start out sounding this way, did it? Mm -mm. No. Years and years of practice. I tell you, I wore out so many cherry LPs. They were just so beat up and everything. I'm glad that the one way I put put out those double CD uh, things of Jerry that hadn't been for them. I'd be searching for some of his LPs again. Yeah. yeah. You be keeping eBay in business, huh? <laughs> Anybody got any bluegrass and guts? Can you show some of those links that you do on YouTube? Uh, He also put the one in uh, Willie Nelson's trigger. Yeah, I've heard that, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, uh, the, that was a Mark one that didn't, it didn't have that pickup in it originally. <coughs> oh, 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 we get that. Ah! I don't know. I had it going straight in. <laughs> uh, something else that I tabbed out. a couple little ending licks. Uh, uh, Jerry did on Don't Think Twice, It's All Right. I got that tabbed out. And, uh, that's another one. Craig 
and tabbed out uh, Chet's ending lick on Cannonball Rag, where Chet does that harmony thing at the very end. That one there. And I said, hmm, I'm going to work on Jerry's ending lick. And that's it. So, here you go. See another lick Jerry used on a lot of things was that uh, from uh, Old Wonder Woman. He also did it on Sit on Top of the World. Mississippi. I can't play it because I don't have my capo. But let me see if anybody have a capo with a little plastic? My my. It needs to be elastic because that's a. It's a really funky tune. Crackers and poking beans. 
my friends. I finally went to Music City, USA. He said, I'm the Alabama Wyman, folks. I'm here to stay to my guitar shoulder. What I was talking about, so we made the record. And we put it out. Who we go? Who get part? Thank <laughs> you. 
Anybody have something they want us to do or a question? We've got the handouts here. Uh, I guess people in the front will get the film handout. Grab one of these over real quick so I make sure I can send But yeah. What was that tune in on that last song he played? It's Polo oh. Built That Again? It's a uh, an E, a B flat, a G, C. Sound that way, yeah. and I think obviously Jerry teaches what they felt like, mm -hmm. they, they feel right. And when you play those, things, matter of fact, if you're working on one of Jerry's tunes and it doesn't feel like it's kind of automatic almost once you figure out how it is, there's a good chance you're doing something wrong because Jerry's stuff is, just sits under your hands. It's odd and it's real unusual. But once you got it, the move is like really like a little, uh, a little engine or something. It's a way to kind of tell if you're getting. Yes. John, um, can I hear you play Blue Finger? <laughs> that sounds good question. We forgot to bring a tip jar. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. You play Blue Finger at all? Used to. You like me on, though, won't you? What's that? You like me on. If I do a good job, sure. <laughs> Jerry jamming in Chet's office, and Chet had the tape recorder going. And my guess is Chet kind of, you know, knocked the edges off some things, maybe add a turnaround here and there to get what we all know called Bluefinger. And uh, I think I've mentioned before that when I played Bluefinger for Jerry, his response was, "What's that?" And I said, "Well, that's Bluefinger." He said, "I don't think I've ever heard that." <laughs> and so whatever it was, it just kind of flitted through his awareness, and luckily Chet caught it. You know. And to me, what that means is, if you're perfectly free, <coughs> excuse me, once you learn the tune, kind of add some moves. And this little bass line, is so inviting. And one of the things I did is I went and figured out what chords are kind of hidden inside that bass line. sharp with the bass, A7, this would be like a, a diminished B flat to bass, <coughs> then E with the B, C sharp, F sharp. So that gives you the opportunity to kind of make up other stuff on top of it. And to me the challenge is not just to kind of jam out, but to like look for stuff that's like Jerry might have done, you know, in Chet's office that day. And, uh, and not that you can do that because he's Jerry and we aren't, you know. So, I've added a few things here and there. I don't have a foot thing, I've been doing this right here, you know. I need to get a foot thing. I think Chet might have been marking his foot when he did this.
glad this many people woke up to see us. And, and I'm really glad it, it occurred to me to say, you know, Phil, we ought to sit down together and see if we can do something. Because uh, I feel like uh, this has been an absolute delight for me. I couldn't see a thing he was doing. I'd have to go over and log on to YouTube. But to be here and sit next to it and feel the energy and the groove, man, is the best. YouTube, play, replay that part over and over. I'll never forget this part. Thanks. John Morris is still here. Shane Atkins is up next.